Hi guys, welcome to another tarot scope. This is going to be for February, 2024. So as usual, I'm going to read uh, the, the reading for the collective, and then we're gonna go in order, starting with Pisces for this part of the year. So first, let me get these cards in order for the collective. Please be clear. One, two, three. Okay. Here's what we've got for the collective so far. We've got the King of Cups. We have the Two of Pentacles and we have the Five of Pentacles. So what we're going to see here is we're really leaning into our sense of emotional maturity. This is where we get to actually test ourselves with the level of emotional work that we've been doing so that we can hold steady in a place of feeling really grounded in our feelings and not overcome by the feelings. This to me with the King of Cups is showing emotional discipline. So yes, it's okay. You hear people say you've got to feel your feelings, which is true, but only to a certain degree. There's something that I learned recently regarding from a psychologist that says, after 15 minutes of really getting into an emotion, uh, let's just say you're crying for 15 minutes, uh, you link back into the beginning of that emotion and you're kind of starting it all over again. So it's sort of a way of emotional regulation to maybe set a timer for 15 minutes and then see how you're feeling after that period of time. When With this two of pentacles, it's showing me that that's what's needed. It's like an, a balance, a balance between our emotions and what's going on outside of us because it's showing that there might be some physical hardships this month, whether it's health-wise, whether there's surprises that come up financially, whether it has to do with maybe the home life being a little disruptive. Uh, disrupted. And what we want to do is be able to navigate these pitfalls and these, these valleys with a sense of emotional maturity so that we are happy, we are good, we are content on the inside, no matter what is happening in the external environment. And this is the month to do it. All right. So let's get into Pisces. Let's see what's going on for Pisces. <laughs> Ooh, interesting Pisces. Okay. So we have the three of cups, we have the devil card, and then we have the page of wands. I was really excited for you guys at first with this three of cups because it's a, the card of celebration. And of course, it's a great time to celebrate. We're in Pisces season. You're in your birthday. There might be uh, people to reach out, reach out to you. So I will say, I would encourage you to celebrate yourself. It's as it is your season, but we're also seeing with the devil card, but as you do so, there might be some things that pop up for you, looking back at different people and what, how, what they call out of you or what they might trigger within you, certain patterns or behaviors of coping that might not be serving you this year. It's a really great time to take a look at your habits and your routines and audit them and make sure it, what you want to take with you to through the next calendar year for yourself, you do but what you want to leave behind, you actually leave behind. It's showing that there might be some childish ways with this page of wands. There might be some childish ways that could use maturing. So ways that maybe you are a little impulsive or overly following your inspirations and not making sure that it's something that you want to see through for the long haul, for example. So this is a month just like we're dealing with as the collective emotional maturity. This is a month of maturity within yourself, but regarding your habits, your routines, and making sure that you are being the person that you aim to be this year. All right. Next, we'll be talking with our Aries friends. Let's see what we've got. Aries, one, two, three. Okay, Aries, this is awesome. We've got the judgment card, we've got the eight of cups, and then we have this card of the chariot. So this is this month you guys are gonna get very, very clear about what means the most to you. This is a time for legacy. This is a time for thinking about your true values, your sense of purpose, your impact in the world. And by doing that deeper inquiry and evaluation, you are going to be ready to leave some things behind. You're ready to leave baggage behind, anything that's emotional draining, we're going to leave that behind. And even if it feels hard to leave behind, or even if it's something that's not so bad that you feel that impetus, like it has to be cut off now, let me remind you the benefit of you 
uh, doing this audit and leaving things behind is it's the fastest path to success and it's the fastest path to momentum. So there have been some things in your life that have been holding you back from the momentum and the success and the, and the movement that you desire. So that's the trade-off. Even if it feels hard to leave some of these things behind, it's going to amplify the, the, the speed in which you achieve and obtain whatever it is that you're looking to achieve and obtain. And it seems to me like you're up to some big, pretty, big, pretty big stuff with that judgment card. All right, next we have Taurus. Let's see what we've got going on with them. One, two, three. Okay, we've got lots of swordsy energy. We've got this nine of swords. We have this queen of swords. And then we have the justice card, which you can see has um, a big sword. So it's sword forward, so to speak. And so what we're seeing here is that you come into this month with a hangover of anxiety from the month prior. And there might be certain stresses in your job or in your personal life that are kind of bleeding into this month. And you're kind of starting off with this feeling of, I'm not sure what to do, but I'm feeling stressed and anxious. It's saying here with this queen of swords, you've got to continue to strategize and see a longer term vision for yourself. I remember that this year is really big for Taurus and a lot of breakthroughs will happen this year, but it doesn't mean it's all going to happen at first. And you're sort of wading through that muck, um, that mental muck that keeps you from being completely clear. But what I'm seeing here is you have it in you to have that clarity from the inside, that small, still voice inside. And it's saying that it is a month to heavily weigh, heavily weigh the path ahead really weigh the pros and cons and think about what you want to be or who you want to be far into the future and make those adjustments now so that you can start being that person now. It's saying uh, if you get beyond the anxiety, you gain that sense of clarity and you can create a path forward for yourself. And your spirit is really looking for that. It's, it's, it's in the mode of weighing, but we don't want to stay in that weighing mode forever. We need to weigh and then we need to choose a path and then sticking to that path into the future is really important instead of waffling and coming back and forth about it. All right, Gemini. All right, Gemini, let's see what we've got going on here. Lots of new energy for Gemini. We've got the Ace of Cups, the Ace of Swords, and the Two of Pentacles. So you probably feel very renewed this month. It's showing here with this Ace of Cups, like this new re renewal with your emotional energy and your feelings. With the Ace of Swords, it's showing a different level of clarity and truth that you're able to access, perhaps through your heart. And you're living this month feeling really balanced between your head and your heart. Your head and your heart are balanced. And that's re really a great place to be because this is the optimal time to take aligned action that you know is in service to something bigger because you're going to be acting from that heart center, not just with logic. But it's important that both of these are in tandem with one another. And that's what's really cool about Geminis. They hold these polarities. They're able to hold opposites. They're able to put equal emphasis on the head and the heart and still feel balanced. So it looks like a pretty easy breezy low stakes month for our Gemini friends. All right, next we have Cancer. Let's see what our Cancers got going for them. Man, this Two of Pentacles is coming up over and over again. So we pulled similar cards as we did for the collective reading. So you might want to go back, Cancer, and look at the collective. We have the um, Seven of Wands, but then we have the Two of Pentacles and the Five of Pentacles, which I believe we pulled for the um, for the reading for the collective. So it's showing that there's a lot of energies coming at you this month that you feel like you have made some progress and you want to hold firm in that progress. And it's possible that these outside energies can kind of be pushing you off balance. And it's not the month to get off balance. It's the month to make a stand to really double down on that boundary or um, on that level of attainment that you've reached. And don't let anyone come after it or push you back. It's very important for you this year to maintain a sense of physical balance. We need to focus on your physical well-being and also your financial well-being. So don't do anything too crazy financially. 
Um, don't do anything too crazy with your body. You know, pay attention and see if there's something that needs to be recalibrated, but only pick a th one or two things to really work on. We don't need you to do a complete overhaul. We just need you to identify a couple of key areas of improvement, but specifically around your finances and or your physical body, because we don't need you to be taken off kilter in either one of those areas this month. All right, Leo is next. All right, Leo, one, two, three. Okay, Leo. So Leo's start off this month a little bit dicey. We've got this eight of swords as the beginning card for this month. But then we see, which is beautiful, the world card and the high priestess. So at first, you might not have a lot of clarity this month. You might be feeling victimized. You might be feeling like you can't see your way out of things. You might feel a little bit trapped or constrained um, against your will. And my invitation to you is like, how would you tell this story if you were in a position of power? How would you rewrite this narrative where you're in a position of personal responsibility so that you can actually unbind yourself. It's showing that, you know, on the other side of this victim mentality is the world card. This is where we feel like every area of our life is functioning well and we feel complete and we feel whole. And from that wholeness, you're able to connect with your intuition and deepen um, your own sense of self and the, own, the your own way in which you guide, you're self-guided. Now, when we're in this victim mentality and feeling like the world is out to get us, it's hard to trust our intuition. So it's time to sort of flip that around, tell yourself a stronger story and be ready and willing to claim the life that you want and to make those actions and change those thoughts to support the fullness of your life, which is more of the truth of who you are. All right, let's keep going. Virgo. Virgo, Virgo. Woo -hoo -hoo. We got lots of swords energy for our Virgo friends too. So, okay, we've got the six of swords. We have the seven of swords, and then we have the queen of pentacles. So what we've got here is sort of like going back and forth in, in this mental conflict. There's a part of this mental conflict that you've escaped. You're sort of creating space between you and maybe the incident that happened that created that tension between maybe you and someone else or maybe you and yourself. And you're just sort of moved a little bit away. Uh, sometimes this card reminds me of those movies where someone's blowing something up in the back and you're driving away as fast as you can and you can see the explosion in the rear view mirror, but you're not in the thick of the conflict, right? Um, and it's showing here, as much as you're trying to get, make steps between you and that conflict, there's still some fundamental trust that was broken in that past scenario. So you can't just move away. You've got to also confront that broken trust within either yourself or another person in order to not sort of recapitulate and create a similar experience for yourself. It's saying, that the queen of pentacles is like the nurturance piece for you, like really taking care of yourself is actually not just avoiding the conflict, but uh, repairing from the conflict um, and sort of cleaning up any sort of messes on either side of the street. So then you can have a nice resolution as opposed to this open-ended sort of ambiguous lack of trust. So if there's been a conflict with someone else or there's a something that you've done to betray yourself and there's a lack of trust there that really needs to be restored and repaired so that you can move forward uh, this month. All right, Libras. Let's see what our Libra friends. Woo. Wow. All right, Libras. We've got a lot going on for you. So here's um, the Libras. We've got the chariot, which is a good omen. We have the lover's card, which I love to see. And then we have this three of swords, which is interesting to see right up next to the lover's card. So it shows to me that there's been a lot of success and forward momentum, probably related to your love life, um, and I'm going to read it as if it's your love life, and then I'll read it another way. But they're showing a lot of life for love life, like a lot of momentum and success, and you're feeling like you're either in a great partnership or there's one on the other someone and that's on the precipice of this really great long-term relationship. If it's not the case and you're like, I'm super single out here, what are you talking about? Then the lover's card would indicate a, a deep sense of internal harmony, inner harmony, where you can feel within yourself that there's a sense of balance and there's a 
a sense of give and take and there's a um like yeah like a balance or a harmonious energy within yourself you've gone really you've made really great strides in that department now what's going to come up for you is there might be a small betrayal there might be a small incident or something that's going to test your resiliency this month and it's showing to me here that sure maybe someone did betray you but actually it's more to do with something that's historical it's more to do with some thoughts and beliefs that you've been holding and this betrayal is going to give you some information about where you need either more healing or what I'm seeing here is like, you've got really successful coping skills. So it's going to give you the opportunity to say, to say, I can be hurt or betrayed and also take care of myself and continue to move forward as opposed to letting it be a completely self-defeating or destructive thing. So I would see it sort of as a blessing and a way for you to either see, like I said, where you need a little more work or where you can use it as a milestone to say, wow, if this would have happened to me six months ago, I would have re responded completely differently. I can see how far I have come. All right, Scorpios, let's see what we've got. All right, Scorpios. Now, I can't help but to remember all of the hard work that we're doing as Scorpios this year, uh, healing ourselves and making sure that we have a good emotional health and well-being. So here's what this month is about for you. It's not a month to make big decisions. It's really not. This is a month of the hanged man. So this means you're probably not moving forward much, but it, you're, there's also nerd, no turning back. There are awarenesses that have developed. There are things that have happened that there's like the new normal is from this point forward. What I love about this hangman card for you guys, Scorpios, is that it's also in um, the Osho Zen Tarot deck. It's the card of a new vision. So from this stationary upside down position, you are going to see your life in a completely different way. Do you know what a blessing this is to be kind of hung upside down just to kind of see, oh, maybe there's places where I'm the problem. Oh, maybe I can see the truth of the situation in a different way. It's very, very important that we have these sort of reflective periods, especially when we're looking at things from a totally different perspective. But you might feel stuck, like you're not moving forward. You're not stuck. You're just sort of like, it's like a retrograde energy. You're just sort of hanging out there so that you can review in a new way. And whatever is happening to you right now, and whatever is causing you this reflective, whoop, this reflective period is coming from way, way back. This is the six of cups, the card of nostalgia, childhood, whatever. So whatever is coming up now is also linked to what's happened in the past, especially if it feels strong. There's that saying in AA, if it's hysterical, it's historical. So there's two things happening at once. Your current reality is presenting itself in a familiar way that you're seeing differently for the first time. And it has to do specifically with your childhood, and this page of wands, it has to do with times in your life where your light or your fire got snuffed out by someone else, has been diminished, where you have felt less worthy, where you have felt like your gifts and your creativity or whatever it is that you did to express yourself wasn't valued. And so you diminished it. And so that's what you're going to be facing this month. It's like, what ways do I dim my light and play it small? How is this showing up in my grown up, mature life? How does this relate to the past? And what can I do? You might not do anything this month because it is just the hanged man of observation. You just might start to notice and there might not be anything to do in particular. All right, let's see what our Sagittarius friends have going on right now. All right, Sag, Sag, Sag. This is looking like a very good month for our Sagittarius friends. We've got the King of Swords. We have the Six of Wands. And then we have this Four of Pentacles. So what I'm seeing here is just such mature maturity, I guess, when it comes to your thoughts and your ideas and how it is that you're moving forward. It's like you've identified a direction and a plan. It's from this mature place. You're feeling like people will follow you, that you're ready to be a leader. And it gives you this sense of self-esteem. Like you feel good because you like your plan, you like your ideas and you're confident in it and you're inspiring others along the way. I love it. What's also really great about your strategic plan and your mind right now is 
is that it gives you a sense of feeling like you're in control. So instead of, you know, I love, I love, I've got Sag in my chart and we love to be spontaneous and adventurous and all of those things, but there's also something about this long haul, long vision and holding true to that direction that also is of value and doesn't diminish your personality or your preferences. So it's a great year or well, actually I do remember that there's like, it is a great year for um, Sagittarius with my 2024 forecast, but it's a great month to stick to the plan and to see what ways this plan inflates your self-esteem and self-worth and makes you feel a little bit more grounded and in control in a positive way. All right, let's see Capricorn. Please be clear, Capricorn. All right, Capricorn, we've got some good stuff coming up for you. We've got the Strength card. We have the Moon card, two major arcanas. And then we have this Four of Wands. So what I'm seeing here for you guys is good on you. Like the, you're really stepping into this eight year, this strength year, very positively. You can embody that strength, which I've mentioned before, is like having that steely spine, that real clarity, that real strength of character, but also this beautiful, soft, open heart. Like your heart is like a flower that is opening and blossoming. And from that place, you're really going to um, be inspired and, and inspire others to follow you. And it's showing this month you're going to hit some certain milestones that you've been working working towards that might feel really good. But before, just as easy as you admit the milestones, you sort of can forget it and not give yourself credit and maybe lean back, digress back into insecurity or fear or not trusting yourself or not feeling fully clear right before you hit that finish line. I'm here to tell you that we've got to work on those negative voices and we've got to just stand in that strength and acknowledge the great leadership that you've done, acknowledge the projects that you've finished or the milestones that you're hitting and don't allow any sort of contradictory thoughts to derail or uh, take the emphasis off of how amazing you are and what great work you've been doing. All right, last but not least, we have Aquarius. All right, Aquarius. All right, so Aquarius, this is really interesting. We have this death card, we have this eight of wands card, and then we have this three of wands. So what I'm seeing here is fast transformation this month. There's gonna be maybe things that happen out of the blue, something swift that happens. Maybe it's an abrupt ending. Maybe it's an abrupt shift, or maybe you get real hell bent on having like a massive shift or trans transformation for yourself. This is the month of those necessary endings happening, you allowing yourself to accept it so that you can move into a stronger forward vision. This three of wands is that vision for yourself, that singular vision. So even if you're a mom or you're a manager or you're a lawyer or whatever, <laughs> you've got a lot going on and a lot of people you know, are sharing in your dream and vision. This is not a shared vision that you're being asked to step into. This is a singular vision for parts of your life that are just meant for you. And whether if you're a single person, then that could be your, you know, many areas of your life. But if you're a mom or a dad, or you've got many people counting on you, this is where you need to carve away some specific time to vision how you want to feel every single day, what you'd like to tackle and what you'd like to take on now and into the future. But this requires making space. And so that's why with this death card, we might have some transitions coming, some fast uh, changes coming. And what I see here with this eight of wands is this is also sometimes swift change, like I've said, or you might get like a quick trip opportunity, or you might decide to move. Like these are big things that might come to your lap that require a quick action, a quick movement to say, yes, I'll do it. And we just want to make sure that it aligns with your long-term vision for yourself, your singular vision for yourself. 
So those are the tarot scopes for February 2024. Thank you guys for listening in. I hope that you enjoy it. And uh, please listen back to your tarot scopes for January and see how they may have resonated with you. And also please check out modernmysticshop.com and click on events. We have a lot of events going on in Atlanta, Georgia, and then also some virtual events happening, especially there's one on Valentine's Day this month that I think you guys might be interested in. Thank you so much and have a wonderful month. See you next time.